So hopefully all of that gets you motivated to hear the hard news about what you got to do. All right. Um, there is more information, by the way, I wanted to bring up um, some of this newer research really quickly. I was just mentioning uh, the rise and spread of autoimmune diseases. Um, and, you know, geneticists were trying to figure out why autoimmune diseases are spreading and raising so quickly. And they thought maybe there was a change in human genetics. If it's a genetic disease, like Western medicine says, then maybe human genetics is changing. And that's why suddenly there's Crohn's disease in the Middle East where it never was before. Turns out, no, what they found is human genetics has not changed much of the past uh, four decades. But what they did find was that the rise and spread of the Western diet, or the rise and spread, I'm sorry, of autoimmune disease has exactly mirrored the rise and spread of the Western diet, which makes a whole lot of sense, right? Um, we've also found uh, that nutrition affects COVID and COVID has been a part of our lives now for a couple of years. And this first study was really interesting because it was uh, one that was studied in British Medical Journal that found that um, before we had vaccines or treatments, that doctors who were plant-based and nurses had a 70% lower rate of moderate to severe COVID than everybody else, 7-0, 70% lower. And those that were um, high protein, low carb had almost a 50% higher rate of moderate to severe COVID, which really showed that people who were eating all plants were very protected. People who were eating almost no plants had much higher rates of disease, right? And um, for those who were in the middle, the pescatarians, they were in the middle. They had a 50% uh, lower rate of COVID compared to everyone else, but not as good as the people who were only plant-based, which is a really important differentiation on just the harm alone that fish does, because a lot of people try to say fish is healthy, but the proof is in the research, right? Um, we've also found that uh, there's a difference in, uh, D in the RNA replication of viruses. This is me on a recent news uh, that I did last week, which is kind of funny because I was talking about green smoothies and look at the green tie and the green suit. I mean, it was pretty cool, not planned, but awesome. Uh, where they found that Johns Hopkins just found that cruciferous vegetables actually cuts the, the rate of replication of the COVID RNA virus in half in half. So if you combine eliminating stuff like meat and dairy animal products and hyper nourishment with cruciferous vegetables, holy moly, uh, that's going to make a big difference in your health. And it really just corresponds with what I've been teaching for over a dozen years, which is that your immune function is dependent on your nourishment levels and how you're eating, right? That if you are eating in a way that supports immune function, you will have reversal of disease and you'll be more resistant to things like infections. And they found this is also true for the cold virus as well. And that's what I've seen over the years is people do my program for lupus and then they stop getting the colds and flus that they used to get. So all really good research that supports what we've been doing for a very long time. Um, so what's important to understand is that a healthy immune system can reverse disease, can fight disease and can recover from disease, right? Really important to understand. So this is what you need to know, right? In my book, Goodbye Lupus, and in my free classes that I'm going to show you uh, a link to at the end, because really, it takes me five hours to teach all the science. So I figured I'll just give you a link to watch that on your own uh, for free um, to add to even more of the free good stuff you're getting here. But the summary of it is that, first of all, first three steps are all about uh, stop getting sicker, right? One of the things my husband teaches when he teaches rapid fat loss is if you want to lose a lot of fat, stop getting fatter first, right? <laughs> Very important. If you want to get healthy, stop getting sicker. So you have to eliminate the inflammatory foods. Now, I'm sure that you guys have heard that, so, that this stuff is unhealthy, animal products, processed foods, and oils, right? Um, I hope that you're hearing that from people. And so I'm not going to go into all the different reasons why. I'm going to focus specifically on the effects of these products on your immune system. I'm going to show you some science behind it because I can't help it. I love science and I personally like to understand rather than just have somebody wave their finger and tell me what to do. But don't get stuck on the pathways. Just try to go with it. And then if you want to learn it more in depth, like I said, I'll show you a link where you can just sit and enjoy hours of it. Okay. Um, so animal products, right? The dairy, the meat, the cheeses. Um, here's the immune pathway I want you to be att pay attention to. So this is the pathway uh, that creates your inflammatory immune system. Now, the inflammatory immune system is important for things like fighting viruses. But if it's overactive, 
it can actually be problematic. And the reason it would be overactive, one of the reasons would be that you're oversupplying arachidonic acid, which is a precursor to making your inflammatory immune system. And where does arachidonic acid come from? All this stuff here that I mentioned before. So if you have too much arachidonic acid, you're going to make too much of these enzymes and you're going to make too much of the products. So the five locks enzyme, so let me show you. So when you eat too much arachidonic acid from any of those sources, you're going to upregulate all of these products, right? Now, 5 locks is, uh, is used for cell growth, right? Which is important. We need cells to be able to grow and repair themselves if we're injured. Problem is, is that if you have too much cell growth, what do you have? You have cancer growth, right? Now, leukotriene B4 is an immune modulator, but when it's overstimulated, you're going to have more inflammatory illnesses, right? Inflammatory bowel disease, asthma, heart disease, chronic inflammation, arthritis, um, edema, pain. So if you have too much of this or you have this, guess what you're probably eating too much of? This right here, right? COX-1, you might've heard that if you take a COX-1 inhibitor like aspirin, you can prevent heart attacks and strokes, right? But how about we stop feeding the pathway that creates heart attacks and strokes, right? COX-2 is involved in many things, but also in vascular generation, okay? So uh, growth of blood vessels, again, mostly used for if you have damage, let's say you get injured, you're gonna need to repair and, and fix a blood vessel. Or if you're exercising and you're trying to grow your muscles, you might have branching of blood vessels, which would be a good thing. But if you overstimulate COX-2, you're going to have increased blood supply to cancer, which will cause cancer growth to go up. And more prostaglandin E2 is going to cause also cancer, irritable bowel, inflammatory bowel disease, chronic pain, and inflammation. Now, just so you know, I was taught this pathway in medical school as were other doctors. The problem is they don't include the part at the top. What we learned for this pathway is what medicines to use in these different areas, okay? So using medications, we can block these enzymes, but we're never taught about this part up here. And I find that to be, uh, when I teach medical professionals, doctors, they're most blown away by that fact right there. Mm -hmm.